Hi everyone. So today's video is quite different from anything I've ever published before. I've always wanted to make a video like this and just never got around to it. But for the past few weeks, I have been sifting through hundreds of videos, uh, just going through clips. And if you have a YouTube channel and you're always filming like I am, you end up with tons of video clips. But I went through most of them, I'd say, and just tried to pick out some behind the scenes stuff that I thought maybe would be interesting and bloopers, of course. I admit a video like this is just a bit out of my comfort zone, but I figured maybe you guys wanna see what I'm really like at times, and then also things that go on like behind the scenes. Often when I work on videos, I'll of course edit out parts that are maybe a distraction, like some background stuff. Um, of course, audio, most of the time, you guys would not wanna listen to my audio all the time. You know, our first language here at home, what we all speak is Dutch, Pennsylvania Dutch, so of course you wouldn't even understand it. And I, you know, often yell to someone, you know, across the driveway or in another building. Or, or, it sounds terrible sometimes, especially going through all of these clips, I discovered how I actually sound at times. It kind of woke me up really to make it a goal of trying to speak kinder and not so, like I sound so bossy at times. And as I started going through videos, I couldn't believe how often Pebbles, my little gray kitty, I'm sure you guys all know her, how often she jumps into my lap. So I thought I'd put some of those clips together. So some of these clips aren't really just, you know, bloopers or necessarily funny, but maybe just interesting, some behind the scenes stuff. And of course, being the curious little cat that she is, she will have her nose right up into my projects at times. So cute though. And then Twinkle, the male, is the funny one. We have so many laughs over you know, some of the things that he does. He's also really, really smart. Sometimes it's almost like he talks, like he'll let us know exactly what he wants. Uh, here he's sitting beside his food dish. You know, he'll look at the dish and then look at me. I mean, he's just same as saying, you know, feed me please, which is often 10 times a day, it seems. Often he'll sit beside me as I'm editing videos. And sometimes when I reach for my mouse, like I have my hand that may be doing something else and I reach for my mouse, his paw will go up on the table too. It's almost like he wants to do what I'm doing. He's also up into my projects at times too. I promise this isn't a cat video, even though it seems that way. I have some other footage too. I also put a few clips in here of me talking to my kitties. I really put on the baby talk for them. The guys always have a fit. They think I kind of overdo it. So it's not kitty do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not kitty. We have a bit of here because we're sitting so smoke. Just ready for their breakfast. The next clips are basically just some background stuff that goes on. Like you guys probably don't think about it when you watch my videos. How much actually goes on in the background sometimes. If you look closely, you see pebbles peeking out from behind the plywood. I didn't even know she was there. I thought it was kind of neat how the white aimer fish are chasing each other in the background. And I should mention some of these videos are not just from this past year. They're actually from the history of my YouTube channel, which is right around three years. I can tell that Ephraim is a lot smaller in some of these videos. They just grow up way too fast.
I put this clip in because I thought it was so sweet. Pebbles was on the sidewalk and MB bent down awkwardly with her totes to pet her. And there's always some people that kind of forget that I'm filming and have a tendency to stand right in front of the lens. And speaking of backgrounds, I had a fit when I saw some of these videos. I decided we have definitely improved some things around here as far as tidied things up, but I'm kind of embarrassed that you guys actually see our clutter that we have or we have had in some of the shops and still have. We're still not finished. I felt like some of these clips look like they belong in the Hoarders TV show. And then of course there's some bad filming clips. I feel like I've improved in that area though, and I really should since I've been at it for you know a couple years now, and with anything, the more often you do it, the better you get at it. A lot of the problem is I do all of my own filming. I don't have anyone behind the camera doing any adjusting, and I like to shoot in a manual mode. And then if I'm outside, especially if the sun is out and then slips behind a, a cloud, of course that won't adjust you know, to the brightness. Uh, so that's why you can hardly see me in some of these clips. And then the dark one here I thought was kind of funny because I talked too long and it actually ended up getting dark on me here. Again, some bright clips and blurry clips. Having a vehicle to get you know from point A to B. I mentioned it on my video. I just hate to do that, but. Uh, first of all, I know I've said this before on my channel. Of course, now and then I will forget to turn my mic on. Very frustrating, as was the case here. In the past, I've gotten Ephraim, my youngest son, to help out, you know, sometimes with, in some of my videos. He's a little more reluctant since he's getting older, but um, it's always kind of funny to me to, you know, watch those videos later on then and see what he actually does. It's just a boy thing, I guess. They always have to be juggling something or pitching something in the air, and it's just, yeah, I find that kind of funny. And of course, Pebbles had to join us here, too. The next section here I found kind of interesting. It's where people try to move things themselves, you know, without asking for help. The first clip here is of my son. He's trying to uh, maneuver a Christmas tree up our steps. And if you listen closely, I actually yell to him from the kitchen. Uh, I say it in Dutch, but I ask him, do you need help? And he's like, no, but obviously he could really use a hand. I'm not sure why we do that. It'd be much easier to ask for help, but often being the impatient person that I am, I don't want to wait for help to come and I'll just do it myself. And that's probably what, where the boys get it from. funny thing here in this clip is the t-shirt that I'm wearing is from my chiropractor and there's all kinds of reminders on the back about moving smart. I thought it was kind of ironic that I'm wearing that shirt and not making the smartest moves.
hopefully I won't have a beam fall on my head, but I guess if I do, everybody will know what happened. I do want to mention that beam that I'm putting up above the shower is really, really heavy. It doesn't look that way in the video, but it was all I could do to hold it up there in place. And just looking at this clip, I'm of course thinking, you know, why didn't I just wait on someone to help me? I also found it kind of funny that I talk about the weather all the time. I don't know, do you guys notice that or not? But, uh, you know, growing up, I always thought people that did that were kind of old. So I'm not sure, is that the case? Or do I just like nature? And I, I actually do, I enjoy the different weathers that we have. I don't know, did you guys just hear the thunder? I can't believe it, here we are again, the last part of October and it's thundering. It's really, really dark out here. As you can see, windy. I think I'm gonna run into the basement. I'm gonna feel safer in there. Um, I had not mentioned the weather earlier, but we're having really warm temperatures here in Ohio. It's probably in the upper 90s maybe. Um, I think the high today was only maybe four degrees or so. And yesterday, I think the high was one. So I'm back again on this beautiful Thursday morning. I can't say enough about the weather we're having right now. I mean, the skies are blue and the sun is shining. It's just perfect out there. Welcome to a hot and humid July 4th morning here in Ohio. Sorry, kitty moves. I actually like Andre back. We're into camera, do it. So, kitty. Yeah. Sorry. I have a few fail clips here that involve decals. Um, I'm trying to rub it onto my surface, in this case a cutting board, and it did not stick. And I think I've mentioned this before on my channel. I get messages about this every now and then where people buy a decal and it won't stick to their surface. And it has happened a few times, this was one of them. And I've noticed like cutting board, that sort of thing are often the items that do it. So I feel like they put a finish on there that just will not allow a decal to stick. So what I did in this case was just apply a coat of polycrylic and that did the trick. And it was the same thing for these salt dough ornaments. And here is a 1973 charger that my dad and I invested in, and I'm determined to put that stripe on the side. I'd never done anything like this before, but I figured it's just similar to applying a decal to a sign. And boy, was I wrong. I mean, we had air bubbles in there. It was the biggest nightmare ever, so disappointing. We ended up taking it to Heritage Signs. It's a local place here, and they did an amazing job at applying that decal. And I think I should probably stay away from air clay I had a few fails with that over the years. The one year I made a nativity scene that ended up cracking for me. And then just recently that little house. As I sorted through all of these clips, I of course noticed a few major improvements that took place since the start of my channel. And one of them, probably the most major one to me anyway, is the kitchen countertops. Um, I cannot believe the difference. I mean, they used to be so ugly, that coffee color with an all scuffed up. And, you know, of course I work a lot on there, so they appear often in my videos. And then a couple of years ago, I redid them. They're actually the same countertop. I just uh, stripped them and bleached them. And it was quite the project. This was not necessarily my favorite project ever, probably one of my least favorite even. 
but it just made such a big difference. I'm so glad I did it. And the other one is the bathroom floor. I don't know if you guys remember how it used to look. Kind of a dirty tan vinyl flooring. And then I ended up painting it. It's still holding out beautifully. I don't think it's chipped off anywhere. Um, I'm just loving that floor still. And since we are at the start of a new year, I thought it would be fun to share my favorite projects from this past year and then also my least favorite. A few of my favorites are my little spa bench that I made. It was about a year ago that I made this out of old bed springs. And then also my entryway cabinet. And I think the reason I picked this one is because it's so useful. Like I always need storage and I use it for all of my camera equipment. Nothing fancy, but I love it. And then the plant stand that I just recently did, I definitely kept that for myself. My least favorite project was the denim apron that I made. It's kind of cute looking, but it's very, very ill-fitting. You can't really tell in the video, but trust me, it is. So the next clips are just random little clips of me messing up while I'm talking. And that is probably most of my bloopers. I'm still, I'm just not really good at talking in front of the camera like this. I mess up a lot. I tell you guys, you would not believe how often I erase and re-record, erase and re-record. But here goes, you can listen to what I sound like most of the time. And as we tour her gardens, you'll see some, and as we tour her gardens, you'll see a little grass walk, and as we tour her gardens, you'll see some grass paths and little gravel walkways that I still don't really know why people would, would. My niece will be going with me. She would, my niece will be going with me today. She would, she. Some of the decorations I'm working with. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate short videos that I plan to post on Cricut. I'm on my Walmart. I'm on my way to Walmart right now. I have a special thing I'm gonna go. So I'm going to be fixing a um, do-it-yourself type projects that I have going on around here with you guys. Oh, that sense. I try to post a... <coughs> here, uh, this <coughs> I could have put a lot more like those in here, but I'll spare you guys. So look at the difference here. This was probably about maybe two and a half years ago. Really not hard at all for me, but... I understand if you're not used to this sort of thing, it can be kind of tricky. So hopefully I can kind of help you out on that end. You'd think I should be a little more excited, right? And I hope you, you know, enjoy this video and I thank you so much for watching. And this one here is just recently. Hi guys, so here I am again. I had warned you guys that I'm on this video making binge as I'm decorating for Christmas. So here I have another short video for you. And I used to really be an ummer, is what I call it, where I just used fill-in words when I didn't really know what to say, or um, which a lot of people do that. I notice that, and I still do it at times. I try not to, but uh, just use a little fill-in words like and, or yeah, or um. And I have a whole little collection of those in here, too. Uh, and for those of you that know, and um, so today I'm gonna work, and so I'm gonna work on that today, and we'll, um, saw this tray so um clothes here um and uh, i have some good news um we um we've spent some uh, more so yeah we enjoy the back deck um but yeah and uh release to uh, you know to do this so um yeah that's uh, my one bit of news and uh, i will be posting that and i have a couple uh, i'm actually really big but i um uh but yeah just excuse me. um but yeah um um um, it's just really, really hard. Um, so hopefully, uh, but yeah, the next step is... I also threw a few clips in here of me speaking Dutch. Um, I'm sure most of you won't understand, but I know there's some of you watching that will. Uh, maybe you can try to figure out what I'm saying. Got an uneven inside. It's my hunt. The hunter versus the hunter. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. so annoying. Yeah, I can show us annoying as what he often had of it. It's so true. Instant is in Anna Hokus, so I show us. That's the snook. I'm going to go to the house and make QA to Aleppo. You can actually do this, you can do it. I also noticed how weird I look when I am trying to film a thumbnail 
what I'll do is just take a video of whatever I want the thumbnail to be and try to do like different poses or expressions and I'll, I'll do a lot of them like different ones so that I have a variety to choose from but it really looks funny if you see them all together like this. And here's some of the more crazy things that I did. Um, some of you may remember that welding video. I tell you, I jumped every time that stick sparked, but I managed to get it done. We always have an issue of water getting into our airline. It's really frustrating if you're trying to plug something in and there's water that sprays everywhere. You can probably see by the expression on my face that I'm not impressed with this. I feel like I even have a Monica vein. Some of you guys may remember the snake episode. I think I had published a portion of it in the Trash to Treasure video when it took place. Pebbles was chasing a snake outside of the shop. I was in the shop innocently working, had the garage door open, and the snake started to crawl inside. And here you can see my reaction. And it was a rather large garter snake. Usually I'm not too squeamish about things like that, but that just creeped me out that it started to crawl towards me into the shop. The next few clips are of just random things that kind of fell apart for me while I was working on them. You guys wouldn't believe what happened when I was waxing this little stand. As I pulled my hand back with my rag, I was using a rag to apply the wax, a splinter went into my middle finger, the tip of my middle finger, and it was a rather long splinter. It went in one end and came out the other. And here, as you can see, I'm trying to pull it out carefully, ended up breaking it off. To make a long story short, a few days later, I ended up going to the doctor to remove it. It was a horrible experience because I get kind of fainty about things like that. It's not that it was even that painful, like he numbed it for me, but it was just the thought that he's digging around in there and it's numb and I'm not feeling anything. Just a whole nother story there, but it definitely created some bad memories involving that cute little cabinet, which is too bad. It also racked up a decent sized doctor bill. I ended up paying over $200 for that doctor's visit just to remove a splinter, but he insisted I take a tetanus shot and I guess those are pretty pricey but it was a good thing that he got it out of there. I tried myself, you know, to get it out and I just couldn't, it was too deep. Because I can't do it in spurt anymore. Yeah. More details that I added since. Nothing too fancy, but I thought maybe you guys would enjoy it. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying the new year that we're in. For us around here, we have some major things that are happening. I haven't talked about it on my channel. It's so hard not to. I thought it would be fun to share one picture of probably the most exciting thing that's ever happened to me, or one of the most, and see if you guys can figure out what it is. So here it is. It's so hard for me not to talk about this, so I'll end the video here. 
and I promise coming soon I'll give you guys all the details. As always, I hope you're having a great day. I hope you enjoyed this video even though it wasn't my usual DIY type of video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!